Doug Marone, the head coach of the Jaguars, joins us now. He plays the Jets this weekend in Jacksonville. Doug, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you? I'm doing well, Michael. Now, when you play a team from your hometown, does that have special meaning, or is every 16, every one of the 16 games equally as important? No, I think I think anywhere where like you're, you're going to be, or you go back, you know, you kind of it's kind of like you know the Titans. You know, my wife's from Nashville, and you know we lost to them last week, so you know it's kind of tough when you go back, um, you know, back to see her parents or friends or no different than you know when i see a lot of my you know and you know we grew up with them we grew up with some jet fans and you know they're going to give us a bunch of crap when we go back there so you know you like to be able to win so you don't you don't have to hear that crap and you can kind of walk around and and um you know so not, get, not not put it in people's face yeah, but sure least, at least people are going to be like look at that Gosh, you got you know you guys stink. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Whatever it is. You mentioned you grew up with Michael, and and Michael reminds us all the time that he grew up with you. He's a big fan of yours. I mean, do you go around telling everybody I grew up with the voice <laughs> of the Yankees, Michael K? Yeah. There's, there's no doubt. And what people don't know is how good of a basketball player Michael was and, and uh, how good Whoa. of an athlete he was growing no, up. So, no, so, no, <laughs> no, no. Something happened, though. No, something happened. No, I'm, I'm telling you now, I'm telling you, he'd post you up down low, and he had this little, like, jump hook shot. He, he was he nah. was tough now. Doug, uh, we're going to have to live this down for a very long time. <laughs> You're a respected man in this industry. You're, what, what was Michael's best game as, as a kid? I, I mean, he was good. He was he was a good athlete. He really was. I'm not I'm not I'm not BSing you guys. Oh. I'm serious. I mean, you know, we we were all very competitive in everything that that we did growing up. I mean, you know, we had to be better at knowing batting stances of players on different teams, stats of different teams. We played basketball, softball, football, and we played football. We didn't even have any grass. I mean, we were playing. You know, you know. The, the light pole is the first down, and the next light pole is a touchdown. So, you know, we were just very competitive in everything we did. And that's the one thing I've always appreciated. You know, people are like, oh, my God, you grew up in the Bronx, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hey, Michael K. grew up with me, too, now. So don't knock me that bad. <laughs> oh, and by the way, and talk about loyalty, this man, Michael K., may have picked, we do five, we pick five games a week. Four, four games? Five weeks? Uh, uh, four. four I forget now. what we do. We pick four a week. Michael may have picked the Jaguars 13 times last season. I can't pick against you. Well, at least it ten. If it was during the regular season, ten times he was right. <laughs> if it was during the playoffs, he was right out of three. So, does does you know, the the one thing we grew up we don't we don't gamble where we grew up. So that's the one thing I just want to make sure everyone understands. There you go. Now, d does uh, you guys came so close to the Super Bowl? Is that something that haunts you? And is this whole season geared toward getting back to that point? Well, I think I think you know sometimes when I go back and I think of my time, let's say when I was at. Uh, when I, well, when I was with the Jets, you know, we're in the second round of the playoffs where we went up to Pittsburgh and, well, you know, we missed, you know, and it wasn't because of the field goals. It was the way we played. We missed two field goals. And if we would have hit one of them, you know, we would have gone to the AFC Championship with a chance to go. That that always lingers. And then when I was in New Orleans my first year, you know, obviously we went to the NFC Championship game. And you always, I think, you know, you go back and you say, and then obviously last year here, and I think you will always go back and say, you know, what could I have done a better job to get us to that game? Because, you know, we're all in this profession to, to, to get to that game and win that game. And, that, and that's why we do what we do. Now, in that playoff game, not to bring up bad memories, because obviously things are off to a good start again for the Jags, but as a fan, it felt like watching it, you could see in the second half momentum what the Patriots were doing and that they were, it was leading to this very Patriots-like situation. Are you cognizant of the feel of something like that in a game, or is it just a play-by-play -play kind of situation? No, I think, you know, I think that's the one thing that, that, that you always have to fight against is, like, kind of your past with teams, like what's gone on in the past or, you know, things you might have done. Um, you know, I remember, we, you know, it was the second quarter. We were in Buffalo, and, you know, we were going to go into a, a two-minute mode, and, and we felt real comfortable about it, and, you know, we gave the ball, we had a 40-yard play, and then, you know, we get a, uh, a fumble, and then all of a sudden they get the ball back and they go score, and then the momentum switched. I think I think a lot of times in the past when you play teams, you know, you'll remember some things, but I think to do a better job, you have to say, okay, this is the team that, I, that I'm with now, and this is the, this is where we are right now with this team, and what is best for this team to do. But 
Don't get me wrong. I think you're correct. I think there are things that come up, especially coaches in the past, that you know may lead to uh, decisions, and, and that's where I've got to do a better job. We're talking with Doug Marone, the head coach of the Jaguars. So the Jets this weekend, Doug, you like their defense a lot, don't you? Oof. I'll tell you what, now, they, they, they can flat out play, and they're getting everybody back. So what do you do against them? How, how do you counteract that? Well, I think, you know, what you have to do is, you know, you got to find a way to, to, to create some leverage. you gotta, you got to get some plays. you got to, you know, when you have the opportunity to, to be able to attack, you, you've got to be able to, um, you know, execute. I mean, really, at the end of the day, it comes down to execution. And, um, you know, they got talent at all three levels. Um, schematically, they give you some issues if you, if you don't stay on track. I think that's the one thing these past couple of weeks where, you know, we've gotten ourselves, we've had too many penalties, whether it be in the red zone or we have penalties out in the field, and, you know, we're not able to overcome them. So I think an important part is being able to stay on track and moving the football and, and giving yourself the ability to get in the red zone, which is difficult to do, you know, to score touchdowns. And obviously we didn't do a good enough job of that last week. What are you seeing of, of Darnold on tape? Do you like what you see? I do. I really do. I, I think that, you know, when coming out, obviously, you've seen him at USC. He was someone that you, you would say, hey, listen, this guy can make all the throws, um, you know, everywhere on the field. He's a, he's a heck of an athlete. You see him move in the pocket. And the one thing that's, that's, um, that I, I, I give him a lot of credit for is that a lot of times, when you, you know, if you're a young quarterback and you're moving in the pocket, you'll take your eyes off the, the receivers down the field. I think he does a great job of when he's able to move – in the pocket or gets flushed from the pocket, his eyes stay downfield and still gets, you know, complete some deep balls. And then I think, you know, the other thing is he's very, he's, you know, people are saying that he's the youngest quarterback, but that's not how he looks on film. You know, here's someone that came in, you know, threw an interception in his first, you know, and then now all of a sudden leads the team back and throws like three or four touchdown passes afterwards. So, He's 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 a guy that's going to be in this league for a long time. He's going to get better and better. He's someone that we're always going to be challenged by. Um, and Jeremy Bates, who's the offensive coordinator, he and I have worked together. I think he does an outstanding job. So it, it's going to be a great challenge for our defense, and, and we're aware of all the weapons that they have on offense too. What's the latest on Fournette? Day to day, you know. I mean, practice today on a limited basis, and you know, I was optimistic two weeks ago. I think. You know, it's tough, you know, when you have a hamstring and you're a running back, it, it's a tough injury to come from. Now, you know, a fat guy like me, I shoot, I, I've never had a hamstring. I never had to worry about it, so it's, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> now, you played the Giants earlier this year. Because of Tom Coughlin and your organization, was that a game that you really wanted to win for him? You know, Tom's not like that. I mean, Coach is, coach is the same. He never changed. I got a, a ton of questions about it and everything, um, you know, and, and – you know, coach is going to do, you know, his normal routine and doing that. And, you know, it was, it was big for us because obviously they're a new staff. I have a ton of respect for Coach Shermer. He's, a, he's an outstanding person. Um, you know, we were really concerned, you know, about their, their talent on the offensive side of the ball and, and Barkley and Ingram and obviously Odell. And uh, Shepard's a guy that's probably a little bit underrated. And Eli's obviously a big guy that can make the throws. So, you know, we were, you know, and home openers are difficult. I think. You know, Herm Edwards told me this a long time ago. He said, you know, the closest uh, you're ever going to get to a playoff game during a regular season is, is, is opening day. And I used to say to myself, I go, well, if that's the case, I don't, are we doing a good enough job coaching? Because the players should play like that throughout the year. He's like, that's just the way it is. So, you know, you really get spent a lot on, on when you play, especially on the road, a home opener, and you're able to get a win. Then you come back and you have your home opener at home. You know, which is obviously a, a big game. So those first two home openers, however you play them, really take a lot at you, a lot out of you, and you have to be able to come back because that's what the NFL is about. We have All Steve right. Young on every Monday, and he always harps on the fact that the first month of the season is almost an extension of the preseason. You're not really going to know what a team is until you get deeper into the year. Do you agree with that? Do you feel that teams will change, and it's hard to really get a feel what a team is this early in the year? Yeah, I think I think in the beginning it's tough. I think once you get you know the four games, um, three to four games on a team during the regular season, I think you have a better uh, idea of of what you know they're trying to accomplish. I think for us as coaches, we'll go through the the preseason. You know, it starts obviously with OTAs and the mini camps, and and you have a feel of what direction you want to go. And then you go into training camp when the pads come on. When you're when I say you're really playing. 
then you have a better idea of who's going to be productive or who you want to get the ball to or, or how you want to be from an identity standpoint of what you can do. And then the other thing that comes into play is, is, is you start to get injuries, you know, and then, you know, now guys are stepping up and can you be that same team, you know, now what do you have to do to, to move the football or stop teams from moving it? So it's kind of a constant flow of, of what you're doing during the season. But I do agree, you know, the first, I feel much more comfortable, you know, after, after you've played three or four games. All right, before we let you go, not to rehash past history, but there were rumors that you were close to getting the Jet job. You didn't get it. Uh, Todd Bowles did. Does that drive you even more when you play the Jets? No, it, it doesn't. I think, I think, you know, I, there was a lot of bad things, you know, said about me. I, I understand that. I just always wish that, you know, I someone would have called me and asked me what my, you know, beliefs gave me an ability to, to answer those questions. I, I never got that opportunity at, at that time. Now it's obviously too late to go back and rehash that. Um, it, it's hurtful, you know, when it's when it's your hometown and, and things are said about you that, you know, are not true. But uh, I didn't hold that against uh, the job. I just felt that, you know, I think when you go and interview for a job, you, you express what your philosophy is, what you believe in. And it's not a matter of not doing a good enough job, let's say, in the interview. It's just maybe that that's not what they're looking for, which is I'd rather it be that way. Um, I think Coach Bowles has done a great job. Mike McCagan and I obviously know each other. He's great. Uh, I spoke to Woody, you know, a couple times after that. We're, in, we're, we're good, I mean, as far as he and I. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have this opportunity down here, and, and, and I love it here. And I think that, you know, sometimes things work out. That's how I look at it. And I think both sides are, are good. I don't you, look at it as a, a game that, you know, hey, I want to do this or get back because I always believe that if, if the most important thing for me to do is do the best job for my team. And I think in any league or anyone, if it ever becomes like an agenda where it's personal and it's my personal agenda to do something, I, I don't think you can be doing the right thing for the team, and that's just what my philosophy is. Are you still eating bologna all the time? I, you know what? I get so much crap about that. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I, the, the answer is absolutely. It's 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 my favorite deal, you know. And and I just can't. I, you know what I found out, Michael? This is what I found out. I found out that people look down on people that eat bologna. It's, it right. blows me away. It's like all of a sudden, like you become in this category of, you know, ugh, you eat this. Uh, I know. Yeah, and and, and um, Don's a big bologna. I, I've come into work, Coach, with a bologna sandwich, and I get shamed by Michael K. I don't care. I just eat. I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People shame you. It's like, I feel like you know, I look back at my life, and I can honestly say I've been bullied by by eating bologna. Wow, I've been this is, hold people. on. Hit the breaking news. This is a big story. <laughs> Doug Marone, a, a true football tough guy, bullied simply because of his love for bologna. Amazing. Yeah, this is not right. <laughs> we wish you good luck on Sunday, yes, and well, everybody, I mean, I know that every guy who grew up with you at Throg's Neck, we're so proud of you, really are. Uh, I wish you only the best I, all I, the time. I, I got to tell you a real quick story. So I was on at the New England the New England week with the New England media. Right. And I guess I don't know how big of a Yankee fan I am, because it's truly the only team that I'm a true fan of. And um, so I asked them after the, we were doing the local media, and I'm like, hey, how about the Red Sox? What do you guys feel? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, they're great, they're great. I go, that's great. I'm glad. You guys are overconfident. I'm happy. And um, they were like, well, what do you like? I'm like, yeah, I'm a Yankee fan. And they're like, oh, that's unbelievable. So, hey, we got to get this thing going. I'm fired up for it, too. Oh, good stuff. Good luck on Sunday, Doug. All right, Michael. Thank you. Right, be well.